Focus on Abilities is brought to you by Tier Memorial Herman, redefining rehabilitation, removing barriers, re-enabling independence. In the ILRU Southwest ADA Center, promoting compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Welcome to Focus on Abilities, a program about issues affecting the lives of people with disabilities. I'm Lex Frieden, your host. I'm professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. And today we are going to talk about a subject that I think all of you will find interesting. We have two great guests and I'll introduce them and the subject after I ask this question, which will give you a clue about what we're talking about. What is the fine? for parking in a space designated for handicapped parking uh, without the appropriate credentials. If you're illegally parked in a space that's designated for accessible parking, what is the fine? We'll hear the answer before the end of today's show. And now it's a pleasure for me to introduce our guests. Tina Williams is here from the Houston Commission on Disabilities. Tina, welcome to Focus on Abilities. Thank you so much. And uh, Maria Ershot from the City of Houston Parking Management Division. Um, Maria, your title is Deputy Assistant Director yeah. for Parking Management, right? You got it. Thank you for having us here okay. today. Uh, Maria, what is your job? I oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the Parking Management Division. We enforce the on-street parking regulations, we maintain the meters, and we also respond to customer inquiries. Now, the, the on-street parking, is that just downtown Houston? No, on-street parking within the city of Houston, all 644 square miles. Because you have safety regulations outside of downtown, it's not just meters. Parking too close to a fire hydrant, parking on the wrong side of the street. So it's for the entire city of Houston. Okay, so it's not just the spots we find downtown. Nope. And, and is that the only place where there are metered parking is in downtown Houston? We have metered parking in downtown, midtown, uh, museum district. So it's not just within um, downtown, also by the colleges, HCC, uh, University of Houston. So you have metered parking kind of throughout the city. And what about parking that's uh, on private spaces? Does the city have any responsibility for that, any uh, kind of authority regarding that? Are you talking about like a private in, parking In lot? a strip shopping center or something like that. We can enforce the accessible parking violations in a private in a, in a private lot. So if someone is parked in an accessible parking space and they don't have valid credentials, they can, they are certainly subject to citation. Okay. And those citations are given by the Houston Police Department, right? Those citations are given by a, police, uh, parking management, plus we also have a volunteer group that can write those citations. Okay, I want to come back and visit about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina, y uh, your role with the commission is to engage in discussions and provide advice related to any matters pertaining to the quality of life for people with disabilities in our city, right? Correct. How long have you been doing this? This is my first term. Um, I've been there since August of last year. And you were appointed by the mayor? Yes, sir. Um, how often does the commission meet? We meet every second Thursday of the month at the Westbury Multiservice Service Center. Is that a public meeting? It is. So on the second Thursday of every month, uh, West Gray uh, Multi Service Center. Right, 1475 West Gray. What, what time are your meetings? From 4 to 6. 4 to 6. So anybody that has an issue, anybody with a disability, a family member, or anyone else, can bring those to you and, and you all will consider those and if necessary provide advice to the city, to the mayor about them? We do have time for public comment before we carry out um, with the set agenda. Okay. One of the issues that I know you've been working on for the last several months has to do with parking, correct? That's correct. Where did the where did the subject matter come from? Just public input from members of the commission? There are there were public comments about uh, people parking in accessible places that did not need to utilize those places or who did not have any, any sign of a disability, um, about people who were sitting and parking in those places waiting for someone to come out 
And then there's a safety issue as well, because someone who needs that, that uh, accessible parking, they could be putting their life in jeopardy because someone else is utilizing a space that was designated for them to park. Yeah, I think that the, the last point you made is very important because the rules that are set up by the state and the federal government for these parking spots are intended to provide uh, the spaces near where the person is going so they don't have to cross in the traffic. Exactly. A lot of people think it's just close because they can't walk far and they see somebody in a power wheelchair like yours or mine and they, they think, well, we could drive a, a mile to get to the space. Why do we need to park in front of the Walgreens? But it's not about that. It's because if we do drive a mile in the wheelchair, we're apt to be run over by somebody exactly. in that parking spot, it's in, the, in the lot. Issue. And a lot of people have been injured that way. So you all are concerned that, that uh, these spots are really used by people who need them. Absolutely. And the, the point you made about people running in, they leave the car parked there, and they run in, and they tell you they're just going to be a couple of minutes. That's silly, too, because they're still taking the spot. Exactly. Illegally. And, and the other thing that I've noticed is that some people may actually bring a disabled person with them in the car and park there and then run in. in the but that doesn't mean they need the spot. Exactly. They're still able to park across the street in the lot and safely traverse across, leaving that spot for somebody who's actually going to get in and out of the vehicle there, exactly. right? Exactly. It's not a victimless crime. That's, that's a crime where someone who actually needs the accessibility for their safety issue to be able to go into the store or what have you, conduct their business and come on out and don't worry, don't have to worry about safety issues. Yeah. Maria, d d you all in the city have observed people abusing these spaces um, and uh, one of the methods that you've used I understand has been collaboration with the HPD to uh, to observe some of the spots maybe before dawn and see who parked there? Yeah, what we do is we've coordinated uh, a sting or a stakeout with HPD and we go out to, you know, high traffic areas where we know that people come there and use a, a accessible placard to park. And we come during the hours where we, where we know they're going to be there before work or after work and we sit there with HPD and, and watch and we pull the placards. And we make sure that the placard matches the driver's license to, you know, so someone's not using grandma's placard and, and parking to go to work. And uh, we've, pulled, we've pulled placards this way. We send them back to uh, TxDOT. Um, they're marked for fraudulent use. And the, you know, grandma has, it's a little bit more difficult for her to get her placard next time. Wow. So, uh, I mean, this just like sounds like NCIS at work down here. <laughs> looking for, but I mean, it's true. You've got uh, in, some, in some cases, even city employees mm -hmm. who would park in these spaces with fraudulent uh, credentials, stay there all day, not have to pay for parking like mm -hmm. their co-workers, and, uh, and also prevent people from using it who really needed it to get downtown near the buildings. Well, it's a golden ticket. I mean, if you could park right in front of your office and walk, take two minutes to walk in versus parking at a garage two, three blocks away and paying $200 a month, you know, it becomes a golden ticket for them. And uh, that's just, you know, one of, the one of the abuses that we're trying to curtail. So there's a number of issues involved here. I, at some point, I think it'd be interesting to, to, to uh, interview a a medical doctor who's responsible mm -hmm. for signing off on these because a lot of people, I believe, have mm -hmm. legal placards mm -hmm. who may not actually meet the qualifications for needing them. So there's a whole array of, of issues we have to address. We'll discuss these in a, in a minute right now. I'd like to take a break from uh, Focus and, and come right back. Please stay tuned. We've got more on parking and people with disabilities. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities. I'm Lex Fried, your host, and we're talking about parking with Tina Williams from the Houston Commission on Disabilities, and with Maria Earshot from the City of Houston Parking Management Division. Um, Maria, now, obviously, there are issues, and and among them, uh, not the least of which, are those that the uh, SWAT 
uh, team stakeouts that you described identified people mm -hmm. who just uh, work downtown and they acquire one of these placards, they don't have a disability, and they use them for pr free parking. Mm -hmm. And uh, that defeats the purpose of on-street parking. I mean, that the purpose of the parking is to provide people with disabilities and others in the community the opportunity to go downtown and shop for a while and then mm -hmm. go home. Uh, and theoretically, many people can use the same spot during the course of the day, but if they're occupied by one person uh, who is probably fraudulently parking there with no, uh, ex at no expense, it's, it's really abuse of the ethics, morality, and the law. Mm -hmm. um, if they're caught, they get a ticket, right? They certainly do. It's a Class and, C misdemeanor. And, and a Class B dis misdemeanor for this purpose gets what size fine? It depends if it's your first, second, or third, but it could go up to about $2,000, depending on the judge. You have to go to court for this. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I'm going to be real careful and make sure that my parking validation is valid. That's a, that's a large size fine. Um, yes. The... Uh, the, the city now is going to impose uh, new rules mm -hmm. that will provide uh, assurances that people can't park there all day long. Correct. How is that going to work? So at each pay station or parking meter, there are usually time limits associated with parking in that space because, like you said, we want to encourage turnover. We want people to vacate the space. If you're an employee, you should be parking off street and saving those spaces for patrons or people who have to visit courts or other buildings, libraries to conduct business. Um, those time limits have to date not been enforced on vehicles that display accessible placards. However, the city has now implemented a policy where those time limits will be enforced on the accessible placard. So if it's a two hour meter, a vehicle displaying an accessible placard can still park for free, but only for the two hours. So the people who would be uh feel like they might be disenfranchised or, or lose benefits by that, might be people with bona fide disabilities mm -hmm. who are parking there and they need to have some place to park when they work. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they're not able to park there for more than two hours if that's the time limit on the parking. Right. They would be disadvantaged. But the reality is their employer is according to the Houston rules mm -hmm. supposed to be providing them with a parking alternative, correct? Correct. Employers in the central business district should be providing sufficient and safe parking for their staff. It's, so it's, if a person with a disability is frustrated by this new rule, if they're watching this program and their employer hasn't offered them uh, an accessible parking spot in some parking they control for employees, that person needs to go to their employer, right? Correct. And if they need help uh, encouraging the employer or letting them know what the rule is, they should be in touch with the Houston Commission on Disabilities Correct. or the city's uh, parking management division, sure. right? We'll do what we can to help. I mean, their employer needs to park that, needs to provide that space. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, why you can't uh, uh, provide enforcement to the employer, at least you can uh, notify them of what the city rules are mm -hmm. on that matter. Uh, Tina, do you feel like there are a lot of people with disabilities working in downtown Houston who will be uh, frustrated by the new rules? I wouldn't say that there are a lot, but I'm not sure personally. But I think that uh, more people without disabilities are taking advantage of the um, accessible parking places. Okay, so really the two hour rule, or uh, Maria, as you said, it depends on the meter. Some are four hours, I guess. It, whatever the length of that time is, if you park there, you need to stay within the time limits of that. And I understand from an earlier discussion that we had that the, uh, the parking can be extended if you do have a, a disability placard in your car. Right, that's still one of the benefits for the accessible community is that we wanted to make sure because sometimes two hours is just not enough. If it takes a little bit longer sometimes. So they can stay for an additional turn of the meter, but it will require payment at that point. Okay. And payment can be made at the meter, or there'll be a new system later on. If you have a smartphone application, yeah. you can dial yep. it in, right? Yep, dial it in. Very cool. Um, th there are issues related to parking outside of Houston in the suburbs. Um, many uh, people 
don't come downtown for any number of reasons. They do shop in the suburbs. And uh, those parking spaces are generally privately controlled mm -hmm. by whoever owns the shopping center, right? Correct. And even still, the, the proprietor's responsible for subscribing to the same laws that set the number of parking spaces mm -hmm. for the city downtown. Mm -hmm. And in that case, if people have issues, um, they may let you know about it because uh, you work together with this HPD and also parking management has their own enforcement people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tina, I'm learning about this volunteer uh, parking team. Many people with disabilities have gone through a training program with parking management to to get credentials to be able to give tickets and and uh, to enforce the handicap parking, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, 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 Maria, how long is the training program? The training program is four hours. Under state code, we have to train you for four hours. We've had the program in place for at least eight, nine years now, maybe longer, and we've trained upwards of 500 volunteers. So if somebody watching this program wants to be a volunteer, and it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be a person with a disability, no. could be a family member or an advocate or somebody who just wants to do the right thing, they can come down, Where? how often is the training held? Where do they get information about it? They can go online to our website at um, www.houstonparking.org. Uh, we train once a month. We have uh, a schedule posted on our website. They can contact us, send us an email, parking at houstontx.org, and .gov, I'm sorry, and uh, we'll, we'll get in touch with them. So the, the, it's a four-hour training program, usually on a Saturday morning? or It's usually during the week. During the week? During the week, uh, on a mor in the morning, 9 to 1. And when they graduate, they get what? They get uh, a baseball cap, City of Houston Parking Management baseball cap. You'll get a city badge, a contractor badge, and we'll give you a ticket book. Very cool. Mm -hmm. and, and what's the process? I mean, so you've got your badge, you got your cap, you got your ticket book. If you see somebody in the spot, what I, I, I realize we're not going to do a training program here, but generally speaking, what? How do they work? Well, the citation is is pretty simple. It's just that one violation parked in an accessible space without the valid placard, and um, we we strongly urge all our volunteers to be non-confrontational. We don't want anyone to get hurt during this process. Mm -hmm. But if they see a vehicle parked at a grocery store parking lot, there's no placard. They just need to take their citation book out of their car. Most of them keep it in their glove box. Mm -hmm. You know, write the plate number down, the location, the date, the officer number, the volunteer number. Sorry, mark off the violation and. Put it on the windshield, and that's it. You're done. Put it on the windshield, and they're tagged for $500, right? That's $500 fine right there. Wow. Stay out of those spots if you don't belong in them. This is Focus on Abilities. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities. I'm Lex Frieden, your host. We're here today talking about parking and people with disabilities, and we have two great guests, uh, Maria Earshot from the Parking Management Division of the City of Houston and Tina Williams from the Commission on Disabilities. Um, we have a mayor in Houston, uh, Mayor Parker, who's very interested in the rights of people with disabilities, and particularly as it relates to parking. She's aware of the abuse that's been uh, conducted downtown by people and, and the city is committed to uh, resolving some of these issues and, and making sure that the people who really have the need for these spots have access to them. Uh, Maria, there's a whole variety of uh, efforts that mm -hmm. are being coordinated now in addition to controlling the on-street uh, on parking. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the other efforts that are going into this? It's a big outreach effort because it's not just about, you know, getting that golden ticket removed from it. It's, we have to educate people that, you know, parking in, in an accessible space without a placard, it's just not acceptable. You can't do that. So we're reaching out to the tax assessor's office. They're the ones who actually issue the placard. So we'd like to give them some information to give to customers who come pick up their placard, give them some background on the rules and regulations. We'd like to work with the medical associations, maybe put editorials in their in their newsletters for doctors so that, you know they think twice before they sign that prescription it it they may think it's no harm but in the end it does have a butterfly effect you know there is a consequence to the freely 
freely issuing uh, these placards. Mm -hmm. We'd also like to work with drivers' uh, education programs and catch the drivers when they're young so that they don't think that parking in this spot for 60 seconds is okay. Teach it to them while they're learning how to drive. And then you, you know, build a foundation and a basis and, and it helps um, eliminate those, those problems that you face later on. Now, I think you pointed out before that uh, sometimes 60 seconds turns into a longer time. It does. Uh, you all are doing a new uh, mm -hmm. public information series. What's it called? Right, so for the upcoming holiday season, we're going to kind of target all of the downtown establishments and the, the patrons who come downtown, the employees who come downtown. And our slogan is, uh, just a minute is 60 seconds too long. So you don't even think about being in that spot for just a minute because chances are you're gonna be there longer than a minute. And there's going to be someone who's gonna be driving around waiting for that parking space because they can't park somewhere else. Right. And it's just, it's not fair and it's unacceptable, it's unethical behavior. Right. Yeah, it, it is so frustrating, I, I, you know, from personal experience to be in, uh, it, looking for a spot and you need to be nearby, mm -hmm. you need to be on the same block. It's difficult to get around sometimes because of the construction mm -hmm. downtown and, and for other reasons. And there is this spot that's designated, it's for uh, people who have these needs to use and yet somebody has just parked in it, they think for a short period of time it's gonna be harmless. They'll run in, get their package or whatever, then it turns out that it takes longer to get their package than they thought, they're there for an extended period of time. Meanwhile, this person is circling the block, looking, you know, waiting for that, that space that they really need. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it is, it's got to be frustrating for so many people, and, uh, and at the same time, people do need uh, spaces to park. That's, uh, I guess, your main business is not only uh, parking for people with disabilities, but to accommodate the public at large. So a number of efforts go into assuring that there are sufficient number of parking spaces. You told me that there's parking, uh, uh, on-street parking in several areas of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tina, we have uh, uh, suburban parking lots all over that do have designated spaces, some of them not enough. Uh, people with disabilities should be advocates, and they can reach the Houston Commission on Disabilities that will take these issues forward by uh, getting on the website, the mayor's uh, office, and there's uh, a, a link to the mayor's office on people with disabilities, and there there's a link to the Commission on Disabilities, and somewhere there there's a discussion site, so you can actually post a comment if you have issues, parking or any other issue, right? Correct, and there's also a public comment when we have our meetings on the second Thursday every month, and they can come in and, and voice that, that situation. Okay, and Maria, for people who have parking-related issues, mm -hmm. uh, including people with disabilities, they should get on the 311 site and there's a comment section there. There's a place people can make comments. Sure. Uh, I think it would be a value uh, if advocates and people with disabilities would let you know mm -hmm. when they do see these uh, abuses occurred because you can send an investigator out there either to stake it out or to drop by on a periodic basis to, to watch that spot, right? Sure, and that's something that we've done before. If there is a, a strip mall that is not living up to the ADA requirements of the number of accessible spaces, let us know. If someone is parking in a space improperly, they think it's on private property and it's their space, it's not their space. It's ADA federal regulations, it's civil rights um, legislation. Yeah, so. actually I, I, I heard an anecdote about uh, one of those shopping centers where the owner of one of the shops got there early in the morning, parked mm -hmm. in the disabled parking spot, stayed there all day. Right. And uh, nobody knew the difference, but in reality, the person wasn't a very good business person because they were probably losing out on business from the space that could have been used by a paying customer. Sure. But it, for whatever the reason, it's abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're all about making Houston more accessible to people with disabilities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the parking management divisions uh, aim towards that. And uh, Tina, the uh, Commission on Disabilities, in any number of ways is, is working to make Houston a better city for people with disabilities. Absolutely. You're know, working hard at it. You know, we're trying to make it fair and equal for everyone. Well, I want to thank you so much for being our guest on the show today. Thank you. Uh, 
I, a lot of people watch Focus on Abilities, and they learn things from it, and they've learned a lot from you today. Uh, Maria, thanks uh, to you and your colleagues at the Parking Management Division for taking seriously this issue, because for so many years, some of us were uh, uh, thinking that maybe nobody cared, but you do, and you're doing something about it, and we're happy about that. Thank I want to thank uh, HTV for helping us produce this show, and I want to thank you all, most importantly, for watching Focus on Abilities. We wouldn't be here if uh, you weren't interested, and we appreciate you tuning in every time you do. My name is Lex Frieden. I'm the host, and uh, I hope you will join us next time for more Focus on Abilities. Thanks for watching. Focus on Abilities is brought to you by Tier Memorial Herman, redefining rehabilitation, removing barriers, re-enabling independence. In the ILRU Southwest ADA Center, promoting compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act.